Hey everyone, welcome back. Larry here again to share with you some troubleshooting tips on how to troubleshoot sealing issues with your conical unit tank pressure fermenter. What I have here is a Brewbuilt X2, which I received as part of a product launch back in February. And ever since I received it, I've been struggling trying to get this thing to hold pressure. You may have seen some of the videos, clips, and posts I've been putting out there showing uh, my struggles with this. And I've heard back from some of you concurring that you too are also having the same problems. So rather than address everyone one at a time uh, with things I've done, I decided to make this short video showing you a number of tips as to what you can do to get a better seal on your pressure fermenter. But wait, this video isn't specific to the X2. All the tips in here, except maybe perhaps the last one I'll give you, apply to any kind of pressure fermenter that uses these V-band clamp style um, clamps to hold these lids on. So it's not limited to just the brew built ones. This may also apply to the spike brewing uh, fermenters as well as the Blickman engineering ones too, which all use the same kind of style uh, lid clamp. Tip number one, make sure that you have all the parts you need. One cause of pressure loss that I've been dealing with and didn't realize initially was that I was missing an important part. It was a beverage dip tube as part of the pressure lid or, or the pressure pack that came with the X2. It came in the box pre-assembled, so I figured it was good to go and I was wrong. Mine was missing the dip tube under the beverage uh, ball lock post. Didn't notice it before, discovered that it was missing, and this is important because that dip tube has the O-ring that creates the seal between the, the uh, ball lock post and the lid. So if that's missing, no matter how much you tighten that thing down, it's not gonna seal all the way. Which leads me to tip number two. Make sure all the connections are fully tightened, especially the threaded ones. Another cause of pressure loss were the loose ball lock posts that were pre-assembled on my lid. I presume they were ready to go. I was wrong again. Tighten them down, uh, help fix that uh, source of leak. Tip number three, make sure that the lid is centered on the vessel. And I mean perfectly centered on the vessel because V-band clamps were never really intended for applications like these. More on that in a later video. If the lid wasn't perfectly centered and you go to screw on and clamp down the uh, lid gasket, you could deform the, the gasket, compress it in a sort of a way that doesn't really help seal or the clamp won't grip the lid all the way around the circumference equally in order to compress it enough all the way around to also get a good seal. Tip number four, make sure the V clamp can actually tighten and compress the gasket. I went through three different clamps, none of which could actually get this thing to hold any pressure. In fact, one of them, even with the T-bolt turned all the way down to the end of its travel on the threads, still didn't tighten this thing down enough where the clamp was able to spin freely around the uh, lid in the vessel indicating, of course, that no sealing was actually taking place. I ended up having to cut a piece of the clamp off just so I can get a little bit of extra travel on that T-bolt to get a little bit of compression, just enough for it to hold some pressure. But that was successful only to a point because the T-bolt was already near the end of its travel. It just ran out of threads, preventing further tightening. Tip number five, use a rubber mallet when tightening the V-clamp. Sometimes when installing these V-clamps, it's common practice to lightly tap around the circumference of the clamp with a rubber mallet in order to facilitate uh, equal compression all the way around the, the circumference. That light tapping helps overcome the friction building up between the clamp and the, and the metal surfaces and therefore allows it to move and slip a little bit in order to get more, more consistent compression around the uh, outside. Tip number six, when pressure testing for leaks, take into account variables that can affect your pressure. One of those variables is temperature. It's important to keep the temperature the same throughout your testing because pressure is related to temperature. If the temperature changes, so will the pressure. The temperature drops, so will the pressure. Temperature goes up, so will the pressure. So to eliminate that variable, make sure you use a consistent temperature, which I was able to achieve using the Ice, uh, the Ice Master Max 2 chiller uh, the whole time in order to maintain a consistent temperature during the entire testing cycle. And I did a lot of testing cycles. Another variable is time. It's important to allow time, especially, well, really mainly if you're using a gas liquid mixture like I was doing during my testing to save on the amount of gas I was wasting for each of these tests. I would actually, I had filled, partially filled the fermenter with water uh, in order to not need as much gas, right, in the headspace to get the pressure I needed for my testing. Saved a lot of money on gas, right? But the downside is that because you have now a gas liquid mixture, it's gonna take some time for that pressure in the headspace, in the gas, the air, whatever the 
CO2 that you added to, uh, to, to dissolve into solution, very similar to how you, what would happen if you're carbonating your beer, right? You apply pressure, it infuses into the beer. It's the same idea when you're doing these testings, you apply it and put on a set temperature or a set pressure. You wait a matter of time. For me, it was a matter of days. Like it, like it generally takes a week to ferment a keg of beer, right? Well, it's not much different here. I had to wait several days for the pressure to stabilize. So for example, in, in my test scenario with 11 gallons of water in this 14 gallon fermenter, applying 10 PSI initially, uh, within a day or two, dropped uh, down to nine and then eventually down to eight PSI and held there. So that was the equilibrium pressure. So don't rush and think that because it dropped a, a PSI overnight or a matter of hours that you still have a leak, you may just have to wait a couple more days to make sure it stops dropping. And tip number seven, reach out to customer service. Uh, Brew Build was really good about getting uh, back to me on these. I mean, they sent me three clamps, three separate V clamps, the one that came with it and two replacement ones. They sent me the missing part, of course, no problem. And they also sent me a replacement lid because I, because even with all the changes I made to the clamps and all the missing parts, I still had a temperature drop or a pressure drop. So the last resort was probably the lid. So they sent me a new lid. I put the lid on with my new modified. Remember, I cut off the piece of the one clamp, my modified clamp, put it on there with everything, and I ran a test and it held for a week and a half. Applied 10 PSI, like, like I said in my example. It stabilized at eight PSI and held for over a week, week and a half so far and counting. Success, right? So if you suspect problems uh, with, with parts, don't hesitate to call them up and uh, get their advice as to what to do next. Uh, it helped with me. I, got, I had to go through a number of iterations of parts. It took a number of weeks, but I got there. Thanks to them for their customer support, of course. Currently, Right now, as I'm sitting here, I'm actually testing a 15 PSI applied pressure uh, to see if it, if it can stabilize at a, at a uh, pressure above eight PSI. Now I'm applying 15, I expect it to drop a couple few PSI, uh, so I'll give it another week, check back on it and see how it goes. Only time will tell. Stay tuned for my full review video of the fermenter. It's not gonna come right away. I'm gonna brew another batch on this now that I got the pressure thing finished. So it's, it's gonna be probably a couple of months before I do a full blown video on this. But in the meantime, make sure you subscribe to my channel if you wanna see that video and more content um, on this and other topics, of course, related to, to, to home brewing. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them below in the comments section, questions, uh, comments, whatever. Make sure you like this video so the algorithm helps promote it, right? Spread the word. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Talk to y'all next time.